Hello and welcome back to Civilization Beyond Earth Rising Tide. This is just a tutorial where we're trying to learn some of the basic game concepts. Again, I created this video to show some friends just kind of what goes on in the game, how the, to best take advantage of different things in the game. Again, my way is not necessarily the right way, it's not necessarily the best way, but uh, you know, it, it works out pretty well and I think it makes a pretty strong building base for, for you to work from. You know, it's not necessarily I was, you know, picking the exact same text that I pick or doing exa everything exactly the same way. It's, you know, it's kind of the thought process, you know, what do you got to think about to be successful in the game. Because so, certainly, I, you know, people win it, you know, different ways. I just have found a way that, you know, works for me. I'm pretty happy with it and I think it, you know, it works decent at the higher level difficulties maybe doesn't win me the game every time but it works out okay so here again we have more eggs I'm just gonna go for the growth base I'm also gonna lock it in here and I'm just gonna go into go ahead and build a farm you know the culture would be nice but the growth at this point is most important and I don't have the best city location I don't have the best tiles for building growth you know, we were not fortunate. I guess we could get over to that fungus. That would actually really help out. That's a pretty good food tile, actually. So anyways, that's where we are at. We're just trying to trying to make things work with what we have. Okay, I was hoping I would see something interesting over the bend. Just over the hill, right? Just over the hill, and everything is honky dory okay so we're not shooting at these aliens even though we do keep on getting this bombard see aliens detected near central please attack please attack yeah and then we get swarmed and where we lose our worker we lose our explorer because say if we do attack that guy it's basically going to upset every single alien on the entire game it's like a hive mind mentality so that's something you need to be aware of when you're playing so yeah, if I, had him, if I had him all upset, this guy would come over here and eat me in one bite. And I don't want that. I don't want that at all. Okay, boy, you... You did not get the best island to land on. Okay, so we have a quest now to build a clinic building. Oh man, I just got a quest... Let's say I can't actually go there and look at it. How do you look up quests? I mean, go down here to the quests and victories. So we can see here that we have three active quests that we can do. Vanishers. Build one clinic building. Gifts from home. Find two resource pods. We've already found one, so right there could be number two for us. Found an outpost, which just basically means do research pioneering. And I think this is actually one of those linear type of quests where it says do this. Do this, do this, do this. So you kind of have an ongoing, ongoing entertainment with that. And if you go over to victories, it actually has the five different victory conditions, which I believe we covered in the last game. I didn't go into great depth about any of them, but again, you can go into your Civilopedia. Let's say that was closed. I had it open. But you can go down here and type in eggs. No, don't type in eggs. Just go down to the bottom. It says victory. And it says here how to win and under how to win it has the five different types of victory if you click on them it goes into depth about what you need to do also if you say are in not the upgrade screen not that one if you're in the victory screen and go over to victories and say eh, what's promised land it says here launch laser comm satellite well geez I don't know where the laser comm satellite is how do you figure that out? Well, let's type that and see what happens. Laser com. Hopefully, I spelled satellite right. Laser com satellite. Orbital unit. Once in orbit, establishes contact with old Earth, which is part of Emancipation Victory and Promised Land Victory. Any city in range also receives plus 15% science overall. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then down over here, it tells you all the information pertinent to it, required resources, and of course, the prerequisite tech. So if we click on that, 
you know, what all does that mean? You know, it kind of just tells you what's all going on here. Let's see here. Does it tell you? So what did it tell us? Lasercom satellite. I had a prerequisite tech, didn't it? Why doesn't it tell me that? That's kind of nice to know. So it says orbital networks. So how do we get to that? Let's go into our tech tree here. And I happen to know where it's at. So orbital networks, lasercom satellite. So what we need to do to win the game with what was it, the emancipation and promised land victories, we need to get the orbital networks technology and then the lasercom satellite within that technology, which only takes like, I don't know, depending on your production, like four to six turns or something like that. It's not that big a deal. But that starts you on the series of items that you need to do to make that victory happen and that'll be your first thing that you're going to want to do now it's not really worth doing this you know like beelining for it and doing it and saying hey old man I'm I'm gonna win because I got this laser comm satellite it's like one step in a, in a series and it's you know it's not worth really getting until one of your affinities is probably approaching 10 you know maybe 8 or so you may consider it but again you'll, you'll probably you'll get a feel for it as you play the game but Anyways, that's kind of what you do. Is you, you can look up things and you can kind of go see well, where, where's orbital networks. You can also, if you go to the filter, go to victories. And under victories, you can see there are very few technologies that are highlighted. But each of these technologies is going to be important to a particular victory condition. So it says here, transcendental map allows the discovery of the transcendental equation and the commencement of the contact victory. So that one's actually quicker to get to. But, you know, there's a series of steps that you got to do to to make it all happen even if you get that. So, that's there's some different things you can do to kind of look around quickly and give you an idea to, you know, kind of reduce all this stuff just coming at you like, you know, you take you take that filter off, go no filter. It's like there's this is like information overload. You know, Civilization Five. If you have, if you've read history books or you've taken history class in school, you have a general idea what most of that stuff is. I know what a swordsman is. I know what an archer is. I know pretty much all what all the technologies are and how all they make sense in the game. Some of this stuff you look at it and you go, hyperconductors, biospheres. You know what is all this stuff? So. What you need to do is just say, hey, there's a lot of information here, and I need to know like 1% of it at this exact moment. So you just need to figure out where you need to go, go do a search, and then kind of break it down to find out where you need to go. So try not to get overwhelmed by it. I know when I initially started playing, I, I bought the game, and I'm like, yeah, geez, this is crazy. So we just picked up 20 science there. We could only move one because these aliens are going to reduce our movement. We also discovered a nest, which is not very exciting. Okay, so we do have a quest decision to make. So there's going to be some flavor text. That's going to tell you basically what's going on. You can read it. If you're playing a multiplayer game or if you've played the game, you know, like once, you probably have an idea what it says. And you can just go over here and kind of mouse over and you get to get the tool tip type of thing. So all relics, free maintenance. Well, geez, how much maintenance is an old relic? So before we go on, look, you know, I want to know. How do you figure that out? So we can go into our city, since we already have that building created. We can hover over our old earth relic. And you can see here it tells us our cost of 60 production. Our maintenance is one energy. So if we had free maintenance for all old earth relics, it's going to save us one energy per turn. You know, over the course of the game, that's going to be, I don't know, three, four hundred energy. But you know, typically that's that's not uh, a huge savings as far as choices go. Or we could go and say, oh, let's refuse the offer, whatever that, whatever this flavor text says, and we get plus one culture from relics. So. Say if our game lasts another 400 turns, that's another 400 culture. So what's 400 culture going to do for us? Well, right now, that's rather significant. It's going to get us to our next virtue faster. 
you know, and I, I don't know, to me, energy is easier to make than culture is. There's going to be lots of ways to get energy. You're going to find it out and about. Culture is a little tougher to get. So I think we're going to go with refuse offer and go with the plus one culture. Now, if you come up with these quest decisions and say, you're, you're really just strapped on energy. You know, maybe that's the right choice, especially if you have more than one city and they all have old earth relics, which I recommend that each city has. But right now, I'm thinking we're going to go for refuse offer, go with the plus one culture, boost us up to four, and I think that is the right decision. Not that the other decision is wrong, I just think it was a better decision. Okay. What are you doing? Horking in in our territory, buddy. So there is probably going to be our first first place we have combat. Okay, so nothing there. Do I have any expeditions I could do? Maybe I want to move down this way and try to get anything anything near them before they do. Or at least go over there and say hi. Which is kind of the same same thing, right? Hey, how's it going? I heard that. I heard that. Okay, so now we have a quest decision. I have no idea what brought this on. So one of them is going to be, again, lots of flavor text. We can go and continue down the Harmony Affinity, or we can continue simultaneously down the Purity and the Supremacy Affinity. So I believe I mentioned that if you look at the affinities, they're each going to have XP. We have no XP in any of the affinities. And then the other thing to consider with these affinities is which one do I go with? I can imagine some people like the same affinities or doing the same ones, or some people like to mix it up. And some people like to play the, well, let's see what's near me when I start the game. So we have Firaxite. And it's not going to fall within our city tile range unless we really expand out. Because I can't, you can't buy the tile that's more than three hexes away. So we'd have to really expand out to get that, and that's going to take a long time. So we'd almost have to build a second city near that to get that. And it's not a very big cache of it anyways. I think it's like two for Axite. Yep, there it is, two. What else do we have around us? That's Elegy. There's some Xenomass. Up there, some Xenomass. And I think this is Xenomass. Nope, that's not even a nine. It's a two. That one looks like it's going to be a two or a three. It's a two. Float stones all look, look like... Well, maybe this one is a little bit better. Eight. Eight float stones. So purity... You know, we're fairly close for that. But, you know, we haven't uncovered much territory yet. So it's... I don't know if I want to say pigeon... You know, pigeon us. Pigeon... As a pigeonhole ourselves in a particular direction. But what I'm thinking is I don't see any large quantities of xenomass that's going to be close enough to us to really consider going down the harmony path at this time. You can you can change your mind and you can work towards it. And it doesn't matter because you can actually make hybrid units that say, say if you get three of one affinity and three of another, there's hybrid units you can make that are cool and you can get you know special bonuses for them and all that stuff. So don't get too concerned about it early, but if you do say, I mean, if you're sitting down here and you have, you know, a ton of Firaxite, go Supremacy. It's nearby. It's going to really help you out when you want to go building units that are specific to that affinity. So anyways, that's some different factors to consider. So what I'm going to do, since I have the Floatstone close by, I have Firaxite fairly close by, although it's in small quantities, I'm going to go with the Deter Banishers and then continue that. And so it says here, continue the quest. So I need to build an ultrasonic fence building. All right. So I didn't actually get any affinity, which I was kind of hoping for. It's me forgetting what the quest exactly does. But it's going to put me down a, a quest path that will get us some, some affinity eventually. Okay, so now we have... We just completed... Oh, that's right. We just completed our clinic. And maybe that's what started the quest was the clinic. Oh, and then we had that quest to build the clinic, so that's where that came from. So kind of having to go back and rethink it. All right, so that's good to know. Now we need something else to build. So we have 18 turns before we can build our recycler. So during that time, what do we want to build? 
I'm, I, I was thinking soldier initially, but since we have a, a opponent close by, you know, what do I want to do? I'm thinking soldier still, so I can send my soldier out to explore, and you know, another explorer would also be an option. I would kind of like to have a patrol boat to help protect my explorer as they kind of wandered about. But we haven't aggroed the aliens yet. So I'm thinking that we probably... I think I might go explore. And that's kind of... It's kind of a feeling type of thing. If I was putting on a harder difficulty, no question it would be a soldier. Or, or the patrol boat. But uh, we're not playing that hard a difficulty, so you have more options. Harder difficulty, soldier definitely builds up your combat strength, and they're at, at like say Apollo, they're going to be insulting you no matter what and saying, "Hey, you're you have no military. They're not trained, and it doesn't make a difference. They're gonna they're gonna find a way to pick on you and make you feel like you're that big, make you like you're itty bitty." Okay, so we can pretty much just hit next turn here for a bit, pretty much, as we move around our explorer. Oh, and I developed another virtue. I am so virtuous. Okay, so virtue number two. So the first few virtues, I would say the first, I don't know, three to me are pretty important about how I go about it. So... We could go with adaptive tactics and get up some get some extra XP from combat, which if you're really combat oriented and you just want to start kicking alien butt, you know, you're you're thinking aliens, game over, man, you know, who's keeping score? You know, go go with that. It's not a bad way to go. You know, the growth is always good. You know, we do have positive health, you know, so that's not bad. But what I like to do is I, cause the one, I don't build a lot of wonders. Basically, you have to end up building one wonder to win the game, unless you go domination, of course. But the, you know, the commodization is gonna be plus one energy for every basic resource. And right now, as far as basic resources go, what do we have? We have the two eggs. We're gonna have the algae pretty soon. We'll probably have this gold, you know. So that's like two or three gold. But. Five energy in the capital. You know, eventually it's gonna. I don't know what you, what you want to call it. It's gonna, gonna peter out, if you will. You know, it's gonna end up being less, you know, less useful eventually. This is gonna be better in the long run. But I like getting a lot of energy early to kind of set me up. So we're gonna go with that. So now my energy is six per turn, which I'm pretty happy with. We're gonna have it rolling pretty good though, though in a bit. All right, they are dead center of that big mass of continents. We don't have to worry about them. It'd make a domination victory somewhat awkward. I'm just trying to get a view of their territory before I can't get over there. Okay, so looks like we have finished building that. Why are you on my land? I hope they move. The question is, do I want to build that gold next or what? I could go cut down that forest. What is that? That's grassland, you know? That's probably worth hacking down. There is no miasma, so I should be safe. Having your worker on miasma is a good way to get him killed because you tend to forget about him. So that was a good thing to note. Okay, you keep on going. Let me get you going towards shore so you can see. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and build a farm. I'll keep him busy a while. And I think he moved off of there. He probably will not return. We did have some population growth. So now we need to figure out what we, what we want to do out of this. So right now this is telling me that I'm going to have 17 turns until a new citizen is born. So if I click on that, it unselects it. 25. What did I say it was before? 17. That's eight turn difference. What if I go with this? Let's see here. What am I building anyways? Let's go... Where's my production queue? Explore, two turns. Okay, that's not going to be a very good indication. Okay, so your product... Your, if you have an unemployed citizen, they're going to do one production. So it's going to be the same as that tile. So basically you're just getting 
one culture out of that, which I'm not going to say one culture is bad, but if I put it on that tile, it'll be worked after I complete it, so then you know I may not forget about it or not. And of course, you can't always just go default, because look what look what happens. So if I say, hey, reset, just do default, it has the three tiles I selected anyways. It's just a habit from Civ 5 where I go in and I make sure certain tiles are worked. Let's see here. In 12 turns, we're going to go into that grasslands. All right. So there's different ways you can play, and some people really like to micromanage, and, you know, maybe the what tiles are working isn't that important to micromanage. Okay, this looks like a big Firaxite. Yeah, that's a 9. And you can kind of tell, if you look at that one, you can see there's additional prongs or spikes, and it's a little bit more... It's a little bit more pizzazz, if you will. It has a little more presence to it. Whereas if we go look at, say, this one, you know, it's just not quite as pronounced, so to say. Okay, so I don't want to get too close to the alien nest that may cause aliens to attack. Um, probably not at this point. I probably could go there. I probably could even walk on them. They wouldn't attack me. But in the future, after I have upset them and killed many of them, the nests are what really sets them up. You know, it's kind of like the, the mother bear. Don't get between the mother bear and the cub. You know, it's one of those things you just don't want to do. Is It's a good way to get killed. Okay, so I typically don't like going and walking on Miasma, but sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes it has to be done. Okay, what do you want? Oh, you finished something. What did you finish? I don't know why it doesn't always tell you, because sometimes I forget. So it wasn't the clinic, it wasn't the old earth relic. You know, I think we built an explorer, which is what we did. So now we have a choice. We have nine turns until chemistry is done. When chemistry is done, we want to go right into the recycler, because that extra production is wonderful. It is awesome. You know, so we could go with a soldier, but I'm thinking that we're probably going to go with the patrol boat. Let's see here. The question now becomes... If Tiangong is upset at us, they will run soldiers over. They do also have the option of sending a qua or naval units. I was going to call it aquatic, but I should call it naval units. These guys, however, whoever they are, it's either going to be Chung, Chung Su or the Northern Sea Alliance. They will send naval units after us. So the patrol boat would be a good thing to have. It's going to take 13 turns. So in nine turns, we'd switch from the patrol boat, and then you will see something else that you can do that's kind of nice within the game. So we need to have an explorer here. We need to send him out. You know, we could start going that way. You know, I might do that. Let's do that. Okay, so you are done moving, so we're going to go ahead and click on next turn. Let's have you just kind of check things out see what we got going on you are just going to make a beeline towards whatever that is over there go ahead and end our turn okay here we got somebody else I'm guessing it's going to be the other Chung Su or Northern Sea Alliance okay keep on moving maybe go down here it looks like we got an a relic, not a relic, but a an expedition set. Oh, there we got a resource pod. Happy about that. And a quest decision. So, what is this from? I have no idea what caused this one. Okay, so we could get plus 15 city hit points from clinics. Okay, so it must have been from our clinic that uh, this happened. And again, if you read the flavor text, it tells you exactly what's going on, but if you just want to guess... You can kind of figure it out. Or we can get plus one health from clinics. So clinics already give you health. So giving them, give a bonus for more health is kind of handy, especially when you want health. If it gives more, it's typically better. You know, the city hit points. You know, the city hit points can be nice if you plan on being a, a sponge for taking damage. I, I try to be a little bit more proactive, and I don't want to have enemies get close to my city, so... Let's go with the civil workers and the plus one health for our clinics. I think that's the better decision. If you like just getting beat on, take the hit points. 
or if you have a ton of health, or if you're playing on a super easy level, maybe it doesn't make as much sense. Okay, so we have an expedition site that has a ton of miasma around it. Holy moly. I can do it, but it is going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. Let's do it. So right now we are at 70 hit points out of 100. We're going to take 10 damage per turn from the miasma. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it. It's going to take 16 turns. Yeah, that is really ugly. <laughs> it's really ugly. Oh boy, what can I do to offset that? Oh, let's see. It's going to take a while. Let's do it anyways. I think it's a good lesson on how to manage things. And it's one of the things with with civilization beyond earth where you sometimes you just have to really micromanage some things. So we picked up 34 science from our resource pod. And that finished off our chemistry. So now we have to go back and look at to see what we want. You know, we do have a quest for pioneering, which is important. We could pick up genetics, which gives us some health bonus, a little bit of science bonus, or it opens up some buildings that allow us to do that. Again, the ecology with the miasma clearing and the ultrasonic fence and the vivarium is good. Engineering is good as well. We get a, an armored unit that can move. Also opens up titanium. However, I do like going with physics. We can build an observatory, which gives us plus two science. And we would also pick up uh, the ranger, which would give us a ranged attack. Terrestrial unit, if you will. Basically our bowman. And I think that's the, probably the best route to go right now. It's what we're going to go with anyways. Who knows, maybe it's not the best choice. It's, oh, there's another resource pod and we're going to go for it. So someone doesn't swoop in and take it. Okay, so I hit next turn. But when you have a guy sitting on Miasma... Sometimes it's a good idea to keep an eye on them. Okay, so you saw there we picked up an orbital unit, which I'm going to have to explain. We also picked up an artifact, which I'm going to have to explain. And the question is, we want to keep on moving and try to pick up these resource pods. I think that we do. Okay, so we picked up what they call an orbital unit. So this particular orbital unit, which you will often get from you know, early in the game. And you can also actually, I can show you where you can pick it up from. So, the orbital unit that we got, that we received from our resource pod, is actually available once you unlock the photo systems, which, as you can see, 348 turns after doing organics. So we could normally have this in by turn 600 or so. No, not really. If we build up more science, we'll, these, will, these numbers will go down. But this is where it's coming from. It's a solar collector from Photo System. So it's an orbital unit. It gives plus one energy on tiles you own. Any city in range also receives 20, plus 20% 20 energy overall. You know, that's something that I didn't really know. It's interesting. I usually don't go for these too much, but you do get free orbital units from time to time. So what you will do, right here is this button looks like a satellite. It says toggles between orbital view and normal game view. So if we click on that, this is our orbital view. So this is what the world looks like from orbit, I guess. Which is pretty amazing. You can see all these aliens still. Besides, besides that, let's talk about this. So here we can see we have our city and where the, you know, what their hexes they own are. So you can kind of see all that. We can't see what tiles we're working but we've looked at our city enough to know that we're working that farm, that farm, which are both eggs, and we're working that farm. So this is going to actually bring up an interesting situation. So if we actually want to launch this solar collector, which every tile that's under it will produce one energy, and if it's, I believe if the city is under it, it will produce an extra bonus 20% energy. So what we can do is we can actually put this anywhere within our orbital unit, if I put it right there, it would do absolutely nothing for us unless we got, unless we were working, say, this tile 
during the time that this orbital unit is up. And they don't stay up forever. They actually will fall to the ground and crash, and then you can actually go and recover them and all that stuff. So typically what you do if you get it early is just put it on the center of your city, and then you can work all those. Well, we know we're not, probably not going to work these crevices anytime soon. So if we go like this, it would work all three tiles, or it would, it would be on all three tiles that we're currently working, including our capital, which our capital does produce... Uh, I don't know, resources basically, it does produce stuff. So I think I'm going to put it right here and it'll be over the center of this of these eggs. We're going we're gonna to put the heat lamp on the eggs basically. So you can see it's right there. We can actually deselect that or go back to our normal game view and we can see it right there. So when you actually get into combat with people you can actually shoot down their orbital units if you have a, a unit that can do that. You can also send up like spy units. I could say send it up, you know, closer to them, and I can kind of see, see everything that's over there. So they're they're kind of interesting. You typically only get more into them later on in the game, but early on you will you will get some like solar collectors, and you may get something else. But I thought it's good to point that out. Okay, so he is still alive, which is good to know. So when he starts getting down there, we're gonna want to move him. And at 16 turns, I'm hoping that we don't have to move them twice. I suppose if, with, with a little bit of mathematics, you can kind of figure out how much you're going to have to move them. But the idea is, he's going to have to be moved at some point. So yeah, he's taking damage. Let's go take a look at him. So he now has 30 hit points out of 100. Okay, that's good to know. And you can also see on here, he has 12 turns left, so he's not going to make it if he stays there. It's basically getting radiation poisoning by doing his job. Interesting. So this hydro coral, is that what it's called? Hydro coral is on top of some ruins. We're gonna want to find a way to get around him. Twenty-five culture from that pod. We can pick up another virtue. So what I am going to do is I'm actually gonna pick up the commodization plus one energy from every basic resource. It should give us a three additional energy and in the long term it actually pays off better than the central planning which only gives us plus five energy in the capital but I like to combine them to make sure I'm making lots of money so now you can see we're two away from that synergy three away from this synergy and we now are making three additional energy so we're at plus 14 I'm very happy with that let's see here what did I say you are yeah it looks like you're at 30 still sometimes once you kind of get an idea of where they're at, you can look at them and just kind of know. Okay. So there is a resource pod there. Where else can you go? I thought I saw another one. Maybe that was another one. Another one. Let's go down this way and try to grab that one. Hopefully it's still there. So you, they may show up on this screen, but since you only saw that when you were landing, you saw the glint of metal as you were making planet fall, you know, somebody else may grab them before you get to them. So that's something important to note. Okay, what are you at now? You're probably at 20. There's something I did not consider when I started this. Which is kind of important. If I actually wait to the last second when I have 10 hit points and move over to here, what if somebody's there? You know, they could actually just... It's something that I would do to somebody else. But I think we'll move back, and then we're going to heal, and then we'll go back. It's a little bit annoying, but I think that's a smart move. Okay, so this is a marvel was discovered. Biopsy alien remains. How we got that, I don't know. But it's something to we're going to... We'll take a look at in a second here. So these are kind of big quests when you go look at them. Let's see here. Is that the strength and decay? There's no mountain. A nearby colony has discovered the remains of an enormous creature on the planet's surface. Most of the remains are underground. Otherwise, they mostly like most likely would have been noticed by orbital operations. Carbon dating has identified the remains are five. No, wait are thousands of years old, a being this size shouldn't even exist, let alone survive intact for millennia. Clearly we still have much to learn about this planet's ecosystem, we should be on the lookout 
for more ancient alien remains. So that was actually one of them up there that I had seen earlier and it wouldn't let me do anything with, wouldn't let me interact with it. So we, we need to find more of those. Typically there's going to be like seven to nine of them or so. So research computing is a quest we now have. Okay, we picked up an artifact and maybe we should go look at the artifacts. Before we get too crazy, we're going to start working our way back. Oops. And when I end a turn, I try not to end it where I like halfway in the next turn, because sometimes you they like move and then you they stutter and then I shouldn't say it. It's not it's not awkward. It's just uh, maybe it's an OCD thing. Maybe that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and return. Well, there's a resource pod down there. There's also some expedition worthy item. Okay, so I think we're good. We're still working on our patrol boat. We got aliens growing and breeding by the second around our city. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where there's just going to be so many aliens, you got to do something. If you go harmony and you have like alien nests within your city limits, it's, it, I don't know, it gets pretty crazy. And after after you attack, say, some aliens, say if there's a nest that was just in a place that's just totally bogging you down, take it out, then don't attack any aliens, you know, just avoid them for, I don't know if it's five to ten turns, there's, you know, somewhere in there, they will actually go back down, and they actually are color-coded to how aggressive they are towards you. So green means they aren't very aggressive towards you. They can still be somewhat aggressive. But right now, I think I could pretty much do anything, and they, they're not going to do much until I prove that I'm not friendly. And it's going to be true of all other aliens that you meet. Another thing that I tend to do, and this isn't so important right now, but later on in the game, after you have you start attacking aliens and you're moving around, I don't ever move my full movement if I'm going into the fog of war or if I'm at war, or if I'm on the verge of war. That way, if I move forward, I can move back. I can dart to one side or another. So I use my space bar a lot, space bar a lot, and just say do nothing. Or you can go down here, and of course, and say do nothing. Well, this is nice, and that's a good way to to save your unit from walking into death. You know, it may, may slow things down that you're trying to do, but if you're just exploring or patrolling or whatever you want to call it. It's usually a pretty good strategy. Okay, so now we have finished with... What did we just finish? We just finished our patrol boat. So now we need a new item to create. So I think we're going to go ahead and go with the recycler. Plus two production when we finish. That's great. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and end our turn. So our explorer that is healing out in the miasma fields of this alien planet, he will join our queue again uh oh we got a siege worm so a siege worm basically is like a moving tornado or something everything it goes through pretty much it destroys but we don't have to worry about him destroying our city he may come over here and destroy our worker and our farm but uh, we can always repair that so anyways the the guy when you set him on heal they're actually going to come back into your queue for units that you'll have to go I don't know flip him through basically so since we have a siege worm, I'm not very excited about going to working that tile. I'll probably go over here and work the gold instead. Let's see here. You go there. You grab that resource. Okay, that's right. We need to explain the artifacts. I think we'll explain the artifacts, and then we will take a break. Okay, so again, I, I guess I could risk it. It's, I'm not risking a whole lot right now. Okay, so we gained some population. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Now, oh, do we want to work that tile? I guess. I guess. If we leave it on this tile, it'd be six turns faster to border, not to border growth, but to a new population. That's probably worth keeping like that. Why don't we get that tile? You know, we could go buy this tile. How significant would that be? I think it would be huge. I think that would be huge. You know, maybe we're going to rearrange and redirect and go buy that tile and work it. 
I think that's a good idea. Hopefully I'll remember that in the next video. So you are not ready yet. Okay, so what we want to go take a look at here are the artifacts. So you basically pick up artifacts in a few different ways. One, you can find them in resource pods. You can find them when you destroy alien nests. Which it's a, and if, if you're playing the, the military game and you just go around destroying nests, that is a great way to get artifacts and you get all kinds of bonuses. You unlock buildings that you can make. You know, it's a pretty good way to, to get these things if you want them. So individually, they are going to have three different ratings. So this one's pristine. This one's worn. And I think, oh, I think the, the one with only one bar is going to be battered. So you can see here, this one would give us 60 culture. This would give us 120 culture. This one would give us 24 production, 96 culture. And it's probably going to go to our capital, even though it doesn't specify that. I think that's what it does. Of course, the culture, it doesn't make a difference. It's not going to boost your city's culture, but it's going to boost your overall culture total. Production, obviously, has to be applied to a city. So, if you get these and you just want to burn through something to get some production, some culture, you can just say, hey, complete research, and you get those things. However, if you do multiples, so if you do these two, it's basically just going to be these two added together. It's nothing too exciting. You could do them individually, and they'd be the same result as this. I can, I can prove that. So 24 production, 96 culture. 120 culture. What did I just say that was for culture? 96. So 96 plus 120 is over 200. That's what we got. So 24 production, 216 culture, that's what you get. Now if we add a third, as you can kind of see it kind of makes sense, we can unlock a building. Where, first of all we're going to get the plus 12 production, we're going to get 123 culture, which 123 culture at this point is pretty pretty cool. The Frontier Stadium would open up. So that building would be unlocked, we'd still have to build the building, but it's basically unlocked for us to build plus 10 city defense. Military units start with a free promotion. So the free promotion, unlike Civilization 5 where you can get some choices, the free promotion is just going to be I don't know, like a plus 10% uh, attack bonus or a plus 10% strength bonus. So that's what you would get. You know, let's say you know it's not bad. It actually could be fairly decent. The question is, do I want to go with that? Am I building a military unit right now? I am not. So what I may do is wait and see what else I get, and maybe I'll get something better. But before we build our next military unit, we may want to consider actually doing that. So you are still healing. You are going to do your thing. I think this is a good place to stop. I'd like to thank you all for watching Civilization Beyond Earth, Rising Tide, as we do a tutorial on how to do some of the basic game, game concepts and how to make it through, I don't know, the first hundred turns or so. I don't know how far we're going to go. Um, I really hadn't thought about actually going through and actually completing a victory with this particular playthrough, but I'm just trying to get people an idea of you know what to do, what to think about when you're building your city, what technologies to take, you know, what's a good order of doing things. Again, if you have some better ideas or some great suggestions, please leave them in the comments, as I am by no means an expert at the game. I do pretty well playing it. I have a lot of success, you know, and I, you know, it's just, it works for me, and so maybe it would work for somebody else. But anyways, if you liked the video, please leave a like. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next video as we continue on. Uh, we'll probably get closer to building a colonist. We're going to get this thing figured out. As you can see, there's some crazy management going on with all this miasma. I mean, that is just crazy over there. I mean, you can't, you can, there's no way you could run soldiers through there and fight. They would end up dying. You can, however, stop and heal and, you know, basically have a, I don't know what you want to call it. You're not dying and you're not gaining. You're just kind of staying. You could maintain an equilibrium for your health. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.